You there? The uh, take your seats, people. The meeting will return to order. Hold on, hold on. I gotta get back to where I was. The secretary is doing some catch-up work. While she is doing this, the timekeeper has reminded me that applause counts toward that speaker's time. So if you're applauding a speech in favor, you are using up the side in favor and vice versa. Okay. The, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Todd Dashoff. Mr. Todd Dashoff, Mr. Chairman, I move to call the question. Is there a second to the motion for the previous question to end debate? Okay. I would like just a show of hands, this is not a vote, how many other people still wish to speak to this question for or against it? Very well, hands down. A two-thirds vote being necessary to end the debate. All those in favor of ending the debate on E Pluribus Hugo, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, there is less than two-thirds in the affirmative, the motion is not ta passed, uh, taken. Mr. Glazer, for what, for what purpose does the member rise? Does, a speech against. Okay, I'll go. Ahead. Yeah, well, that we were. A spe were we at speech against or for? That was a motion. That's just so we were at for. So Joe was for. And we were against. Yeah, we were against. So we were against. Okay. Okay. Who wants to speak against? I did recognize Mr. Glazer. Okay. Sorry if that. Glenn Glazer. Sorry if that was confusing. So <clears throat> there are a couple things, uh, one of which is that um, I believe that my fellow offender are not dumb. And even though people uh, speaking against have used the argument that Finn won't understand that I find that uh, argument repugnant, um, and I wish people would not use it. Um, on the other hand, um, because fans are not, Finn are not dumb, um, I think we have the capacity to recognize uh, some style over substance. Um, I am not impressed by large numbers of graphs and other shiny things going before my eyes. Um, I do not believe that any of that, all of that explanation really justifies the answer to the question, what problem are we trying to solve? And there have been six decades of Hugo Awards. This has happened once. In statistics and mathematics, and in formal logic, we call this hasty generalization. They have taken a single data point and assumed that all things will happen from it, that it will continue to happen time and time again. There is no evidence to support that notion. The other thing I would like to address is on Friday, I believe it was, I asked if there was an algorithm. Uh, there is not. Uh, the reason I asked if there was an algorithm is because there is no way to formally prove or test that any given implementation of this meets the specification because the specification is written in common English. It is not um, uh, testable in the formal sense. Um, you can have multiple versions of, this, of programs that agree, but that doesn't tell you actually if, it is a, if any of them are correct. What it tells you is one of two things. Either A, you have a probabilistic agreement, or B, that they're both wrong in the same way. Okay, that doesn't tell you that they're right, okay, in, in a formal, logical way. I am very concerned for this reason. Faith in the Hugos is low at the moment. There's a lot of people who don't believe in the system. If we make a mistake, if we do this wrong, we will have killed the Hugos more thoroughly than anyone else who, out there who is trying. Uh, before proceeding, the chair would like to remind all members that unless you are in, in a situation with a mobility issue where you are unable to rise, uh, if you are simply sitting in your seat and raising your hand, the chair is going to assume that you need to let the blood run out of your arm because the chair will never call on you. A speech in favor... Uh, yes, I see that. But that that wasn't the one I was actually issuing on. I've got so many choices here, and I apologize. I'm, th not all of you are going to get a chance to speak, uh, Mr. O'Neill. There are a lot of you. I just have to. I'm basically picking at random at this point now. No, you. <laughs> Hi, uh, Dave O'Neill. Um, just to address one of the points made earlier. By the, oh. 
yes, by the previous speaker, which I think is valid, or at least worthy of going back on. This is an exploit. It has been done once. If we believe it will not happen again, we are deluding ourselves badly. There were 500 people who voted strictly slate who can vote, nominate next year. I do not believe for a second they will not do so. And we have to accept, if we do not pass something this year, which we don't have to ratify, we will be back here next year voting no award. I do not want to see that, and neither should you. Um, against, and that was, a, that was in favor, so against, uh, yes sir, you, yes. Uh, uh, well, you could, you could amend, uh, the question was, could he offer an amendment? Uh, you can come to this, come to the microphone, give your name, and offer your amendment. My name is Mike Johns. Yeah. Take the microphone out, there we My go. My name is Mike Johns. I'd like to offer an amendment to section 3.8.3, .3, part four. I would like to strike the part that says, then all such nominees tied at that round shall be eliminated and replace with, then a nominee selected at random from the tied nominees shall be eliminated. The same random data set shall be used every time the nominee list is compiled in a particular year. Ha sir, have you produced that in writing? It's not well. Uh, you, you, you. All right, is there a second to the member's motion? Without a second, the, the motion uh, is not on the before us. Take your, uh, you need no, to second. I don't need it. Yeah. Mo motion is not seconded. Okay. Uh, for what, what's the parliamentary inquiry, Ms. Hayes? Mr. Chairman, would any part of this vote for this amendment have any effect on the Hugos next year at Kansas City? No. The answer, no, please don't answer it from the floor. The answer is no. Nothing we pass here has any effect on next year's Hugo Awards. Only things that we pass here and that are ratified next year would have an effect and they would first take effect in 2017's Hugo Awards. Uh, Mr. Pomeranz. John Pomeranz. Uh, in my non-Fanish life, I work on election law issues, and I am aware of and, in fact, fascinated by some of the work of the more innovative thinkers who study the various ways of tabulating preferences in a group to yield a result that most accurately reflects the collective wisdom of that group. And I note that fandom has been ahead of uh, election systems in many parts of the world for decades in that we already have a preferential ballot. So good on you. We're doing well. And I acknowledge that as a purely theoretical matter, that the, those who have drafted EPH have developed a more perfect voting system. And I applaud them for doing so. They've done a great job. But, and you knew this was coming, our current but not as good system seems to be working. And I thought so before the results of this year's Hugos were announced, and I am more certain of that now. Fandom will clearly, at least at this time, not accept slate voting and will insist that the best works of science fiction rise and fall on their individual merits. It has been argued that this is too complicated, uh, and it's been pointed out quite correctly that our current system is somewhat complicated. This is more complicated. But I think the biggest concern about adopting this now is that if we take action now to change the system, we run the risk that those who are unsatisfied with not last night's results um, will charge us that we are gaming the system to exclude them. We must not give them that opportunity to perpetuate such a campaign of misinformation. So I applaud and thank the makers of this motion for their really excellent and well thought out proposal, but I strongly urge this business meeting to defeat it now soundly. Ms. Kortai, am I pronouncing it right, Dara? T, Korti? I, I never can remember it, I apologize, Dara.
Dara Koroti, I've been one of the proponents. No, hold the mic. Oh. Am I still not close enough? Okay. Yeah. Dara Koroti, I've been one of the proponents of what happened last night. I consider it the least available disaster of the possible disasters available to us. And I want to directly address the previous point. The previous slide has been fueled fundamentally by resentment in the form of political resentment. Resentment is a term that is used to describe a typically populist feeling that what you are deserved has been stolen from you, that it is rightfully yours, that it belongs to you, and that any victory is a cheat. For what, a uh, just a moment, and I'm getting there. For I'm what, getting no, 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 no. For what purpose does the member rise? Mr. Chairman, uh, you, you need to, uh, Mr. S uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, you need to address it. You, they, they, that is a question of privilege. You're raising a point of order, you, uh, the saying that the member is, is, is slandering. M no, the, ch the point of order is not well taken. The speaker did not address an individual person. Your, your point of order is not well taken. Does the member wish to appeal the, the chair's ruling? Thank you. I will clarify that I am not speaking to each and every individual puppy member, and I am, in fact, more specifically speaking in general of the rapid faction of the movement. Microphone. Oh, and slow down. Yeah, and the, slow you're, you're falling behind. Doing the best I can. I am, I, I'm, I'm it's, it's, it's touching my lips. I can't get any closer than this. So, yes. the point being that the defeat last night is not a discouragement to those motivated by that type of political action. That speech is an encouragement. The previous member spoke to the idea that, the, that by adopting this amendment would produce charges of gaming the system and modifying the system specifically to defeat them. That charge is already out there. It was out before last night's election, and it is out there now. It, it was, in fact, fueled by the result of last night's vote. I watched the Twitter stream because I do that sort of thing, and they are already making that charge in large numbers. They are also reaching out to Gamergate. I have several screen caps in case anyone wants to contest that to attempt to spread that, to bring that faction into their faction. Secondly, I have a second point which does not address the immediate previous well, previous commenter, which is that the idea that this will not happen again. One, I've been on what you might call part of the problem side of the operational security gate, and once an exploit is known and successful, it will be used until it is fixed. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about opposition slates. People haven't been talking about that. The sad puppy leadership, excuse me, not the sads, the rabid puppy leadership in the, in the person of, I think we all know who, has already announced his intents to relaunch his campaign. He has stated that in words. And he has vowed to do so in every category and flood every category. We can't stop that for 2016, but what is the reaction to that going to be? And what is that campaign going to take in form? I suspect we may see sabotage nominations from that faction. I also suspect what we will see what has happened in every uh, time in favor of the uh, pr uh, proposal has expired. There is no further time in favor. Speech against. Ms. Dashoff, you, um, uh, you need to come to the microphone to ask the question. I don't know what you call it. I simply wanted to know from the people who have the mathematical abilities, who do they think would have been nominated should their system have been used this year? It is a debate. I'm taking, it's a speech against. I'm taking it as a speech I, against. I thought it was a simple, can you mi tell mi me mi what mi you No, the, an the, the answer is there is no way to answer your question in, uh, in, in this case. You're asking a Thank question, you. you're using up the debate time against. Sorry. Speech against, um, yeah. Who did you? Uh, the, okay, a moment here, a parliamentary inquiry. He has a mobility issue, and I need to, ta need to take the microphone to him. And the timekeeper will use this time to update that there is about four and a half, little less than four and a half minutes remaining for speeches against. The member will state his parliamentary inquiries. The member will state his parliamentary inquiry. Yes, earlier in, this, uh, in, in the meeting, we, uh, I think, uh, asked the... Uh, for the data for this uh, uh, 
this convention to uh, be available, was that run against? Uh, well, it's, that's not a parliamentary inquiry. The question was asked, we passed a motion that asked the current administrators to release anonymized voting data. The administrators have said you must write to the Hugo admin address and they will contact you. The Hugo administrators will respond to those requests. That's who you have to contact. To my knowledge, there hasn't been any such releases been done because all of the people actually administering the award have been very busy administering the award. It's the address is yougoadmin at sasquan.org. Can I get your name for the record? Mike Thank Stern you. was the speaker. All right, let's get the microphone back here. Yes, Mr. Olson. And, and in fact, one of the problems with being able to find the first person is that it is not actually possible from up here to see the whole room, even here. So I'm, I'm missing somebody no matter what I do. Okay. Okay, first of all, I, I want to believe in this. I, it sounds good, Name. but, Name. Mar sorry, my apologies, Mark Olson. I want to believe in this proposal. It sounds good. I am not yet convinced. I have a good mathematical background, and consequently, I also manage software development. Consequently, I don't believe anybody until I can look at it myself. <laughs> Complexity is the enemy of legitimacy. And right now, my biggest fear is that we're going to delegitimize the Hugos further. Two points, questions you should ask yourself. Do you believe you could go outside right now and explain to a random fan who's not a rules geek what, how this thing works. Some of you do, I don't. Two, do you understand the effect of the rule well enough that you can be sure that it would work in reality as well as, as, uh, well as you think it will work? You hope it'll work. Um, which do you think you should, uh, we should do? Which should we do first? Pass the rule? or understand it. I want to really understand this. I want to run it against real data. I want to talk about it. I want to have it really thoroughly understood and come back, if it passes those rules, come back next year and pass it. Another speech against us, uh, uh, well, that's not a point of order. You can't gain preference for it on it. Uh, Mr. Lynch. Uh, you cannot raise a point of order solely for the purpose of moving the previous question. That was the, what happened just then. I want people to real, the byplay there was. You can take the mic and Oh, baby. Oh, stand straight. You can do it. <laughs> Rich Lynch. Um, Rich Lynch, can I say it better? Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to agree with Mr. Pomerantz that, uh, that what's happening with this proposal is it's gaming the system. Uh, it's gaming the system against previous gaming of the system, and two wrongs are not making a right here. Uh, the existing system has been in place since 1959. More than half a century. It's worked perfectly well. And I would also like to point out that there has not been a no award since 1977 until last night. So what we have here basically is a one-year aberration People predict there may be more than that. There's no evidence that there is yet. Let's wait and see what happens before we overreact. Against, uh, Mr. Kowalczyk. There are two minutes remaining. So, uh, Rick Kowalczyk, a couple of brief points. I agree with what Mr. Pomerantz and Mr. Lorenz said. Uh, for someone who said there were 500 block nominations, my look at the data is there are about two or 300 block nominations. Uh, uh, well, Members, please, nominations please is what's do important. not. The <laughs> problem is, was with nominations, not with votes. The problem was with nominations, not with votes. The second point is that um, there are better solutions to this. There are simpler solutions to this. Go, if you want to avoid blocks, go with 3 and 10 or something like that. And finally, for those of you who say there are lots of volunteers, uh, you should sit in John Lorenz's seat, uh, shoes. You should sit in a lot of people's shoes. If you think there are lots of volunteers, I think you all should show up at 4 o'clock in the exhibit hall and help pack out. <laughs> Mr. Yellow, speech against. I believe the correct term of address is Mr. Big Heart. Oh, yes. Mr. Big Heart. 